a flaming skull floats through the room and a man disappears. A fortune in jewels stolen while Leona watched, yet he could see nothing but the skeleton fingers. Crime is rampant, but there is no clue. Nothing but a flaming skull. Creeps, this is Peter Laurie, back again to open the doors of the Mystery Playhouse. And tonight, we have a guest appearance of our friend, the Shadow, one of the most fascinating characters in the business of crime detection. He's the man who is always getting shot in his invisibility. But in this adventure, the case of the Flaming Skull, the shadow is nearly made permanently invisible by a skeleton. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. <laughs> the shadow, who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret, the hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, The Case of the Flaming Skull. A late afternoon thunderstorm breaks over the city. As people run for cover, two men collide as they dash into a small doorway. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's all right. Cranston. Lamont Cranston. Why, it's Steve Crane. Hello, Steve. Lamont, if this isn't the weirdest coincidence... I haven't seen you for ages, Steve. How's the promising young chemist? Lamont, listen. Last I, I heard, you had a swell job doing research for the Guild yeah. Labs. Still with him? Yes, Lamont. Married? Yes. Lamont, listen to me. You won't believe it, but I was on my way over to see you. Lamont, I'm in a jam. What's the matter, Steve? I've been walking around all day. I've been going out of my mind. Then I remembered that you used to study occult science and all that, and... What kind of a jam needs occult scientists? Lamont, please don't laugh at me, but... I'm going to die. <laughs> we all are, sooner or later. But we don't all get special announcements. What? You did? Yes. When? How? It was last night. I, I haven't been sleeping well lately. I've been nervous and high-strung. I've been working pretty hard in a new thorium synthesis. Yes? About two o'clock this morning, I got up for a drink of water. I went into the bathroom, turned on the faucet, and then... Go on. I saw a flaming skull staring at me. What? In the darkness, I saw a hideous flaming skull grinning at me, pale and flickering, burning a dull green in the blackness. Yes? It was a terrible shock. I suppose I must have passed out. When I came to, it was gone. But I knew, Lamont. I knew it was a warning. Steve, you're tired, overworked. You can't It was take a presentiment, Lamont. It was a warning. It was a hallucination. Now, pay attention to Uncle Lamont. You want my advice? Yes, of course. All right, here's, uh, here's the address of a friend of mine, Dr. Neil Harrison. He specializes in your kind of case. Too much work and too much imagination. Now, you go see him at once. Then, then you don't think that skull was... My dear Steve, I speak now as an occult specialist. The most horrible presentiment in the world can be dispelled with, with bicarbonate of soda in two weeks in the country. Uh, hello. Mm, yes. This is Helen Grant, Steve's wife. Oh, yes, Mrs. Grant. Oh, Mr. Cranston, can you come over to our house right away? Come over to your... Well, what time is it, Mrs. Grant? Oh, it's five o'clock, almost dawn. I know it's an unusual request, Mr. Cranston. Oh, anything wrong? Yes. With Steve? Yes. What's happened? He... He's been kidnapped. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, Mr. Cranston, I'm so glad you're here. I've been half out of my mind. No, no, no. Take it easy, Mrs. Grant. Uh, suppose I come in and you tell me all about uh, it. Yes, yes, come in. Uh, please sit down, Mr. Cranston. Oh, thank you. Now, Mrs. Uh, Grant, from the beginning. Well, it, it was about midnight. I'd gone to bed and been asleep for a few hours. And suddenly I woke. I heard a sound, an awful sound. What was it? Well, it, it was a sobbing, crying noise. It seemed to come from Steve's bedroom across the hall. What did you do? Well, I got up and went to the door of my room. I opened it. It was dark in the house. And in the blackness, I saw... I saw... Yes, what? A flaming skull. You were sure of that? Yes. Yes, it was a little distance away. It was coming out of Steve's room, floating in the air. It burned with a green flickering flame. It was ghastly. What did you do? I screamed. Then I fainted. When I came to, it was gone. I rushed into Steve's room to tell him, and Steve was gone, too. I see. All his clothes were in his room. Everything. He hadn't packed and left. It, it's obvious he was taken away. Taken by that horrible skull. I, I didn't know what to do. But last I remembered, he'd said something about you being an expert in the occult. And weird things. So I called you. Well, I'm glad you did, Mrs. Grant. But what are we going to do, Mr. Grant? No, no, no. Don't worry. We're going to find Steve. about it, Miss Lane? Is Cranston fooling you with this ghost story? I don't know yet, Commissioner. I want to hear the rest of the story. Well, that's all there is. First, Grant came to me with a story about a flaming skull, then Mrs. Grant. Was it kidnapping Lamont? Oh, well, perhaps. I checked Steve's room. All his clothes were there, his shoes, everything. Well, Most what is important that is... To prove? Well, his identification papers were there. Licenses, checkbooks, everything. It doesn't prove much except that Grant didn't walk out of the house voluntarily. A man might cook up an ingenious plan like this to leave his wife, but uh, he doesn't leave all of his money, papers, and important documents behind. Yeah, that's right. How about the sobbing, crying noise Mrs. Grant heard? Well, I couldn't find anything to account for that. So we're left with exactly this. A guy disappears, and he and his wife tell a crazy yarn about flaming skulls, and we're supposed to believe that said skull kidnapped the man. That explanation will do until a better one comes along, Commissioner. Got a better one? Mm, sure, I got a better one. The obvious one. Grant and his wife cooked up the story to beat the insurance company. He isn't insured. Then he's trying to get publicity for some crazy invention he made. He was a research chemist working for the Guild Labs. He made no invention, and if he did, it would belong to the Guild Company and not to him. I don't believe you or Grant or his wife, and I don't believe in flaming skulls either. You can chew on that for a while. Weston? Yeah, yeah. What? Say that again. Well, I'll be... Okay, okay, coming right over. What is it, Commissioner? You look startled, to say the least. That phone call has just dropped a bomb in my lap, Miss Lane. Now let's have the explosion. Adam Edwards, the broker, has just reported a burglar in his home. $15,000 in cash was stolen. Why, Commissioner, a $15,000 robbery is no explosion. Yeah? Well, maybe you'll get a bang out of this. The dough was stolen by a flaming skull. Mr. Edwards, uh, I'm Commissioner Weston. Oh, yes, pleased to meet you, Commissioner. Uh, this is Lamont Cranston, Miss Margot Lane. How do you do? How do, you do? How do, you do? How do you do? I brought them along because they happen to be interested in flaming skulls, too. Oh, you've seen the operation, Mr. Cranston? Mm, yes. Uh, suppose you let us have the story, Mr. Edwards. Well, it's quite simple and quite frightening. I was awakened this morning about three o'clock by the sound of a body moving about in my study. Uh-huh. Now, it's a well-known fact that I keep large sums of cash in the house... I assumed that some ill-advised burglar was after my money. Why ill-advised? Well, I'm a crack shot, Mr. Cranston. I have a license to keep a revolver in the house. I immediately arose and got the gun and tiptoed toward the study. And then? I opened the door very carefully. And in the darkness, I saw a flaming skull hovering over my desk. While flaming skeleton hands rifled the drawers. Oh, so now a pair of hands are added to the skull. Pretty soon, we'll get the whole skeleton. Now, what did you do, Mr. Edwards? Well, I... <laughs> hadn't lost all my nerve. I, I fired, but I'm afraid my aim wasn't very good. Yes? Instantly, the skull and hands rushed off through the darkness. I tried to follow. I, 
I heard the thing blundering around the far side of the study, and before I could catch up, it was gone. And so was my money. That's all. Ah, it's too much for me. What is this, a conspiracy? Are you all trying to pull my leg? You don't believe my story, Commissioner. Frankly, no. I see. All right, come this way, please. I have something to show you. Why? You see, I'm an amateur photographer. I had this closet fitted up as a dark room. The door to it is right next to the study door. Evidently, the flaming skull blundered into the closet by mistake. I still don't see what all this has got to do with the skull. I want you to come into the dark room, please. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but this red light here is all the illumination I can give you. It's enough, Mr. Edwards. Go ahead. Now, when the intruder came into this room last night, he apparently dislodged one of my unexposed plates and knocked it into the developer tray. I want you to look at this plate, Commissioner. Tell me what you see on it. Ha! Cranston! It's it's a skeleton hand. Well, this is a fine thing, Mr. Cranston. A fine thing indeed. (laughs) What's eating you, Margot? What's eating me? It's a question I've been wanting to ask you. Sit around like a bump on a log all day. I was thinking. No, worrying about the flaming skull. Suddenly, at 7 o'clock tonight, you announce we're going for a drive. Where? To visit a friend. Why? To pick up a clue on this case. Who's the friend? Uh, Dr. Neil Harrison. I sent Steve Grant to see him yesterday afternoon. It's just possible that Steve might have said something to Dr. Harrison that would give us a clue. Then all that worrying, I mean thinking, this afternoon didn't help? No inspiration? It certainly did help, Margot, but... Right now, the fire of inspiration needs a little more coal. To be shoveled on by Lamont Cranston Stoker. No, no. Lamont Cranston Shadow. Next patient, please. Yeah, that's odd. Waiting room's empty. I could have sworn I heard a patient come in. <laughs> Who's that? Your patient, Dr. Harrison. Patient? Where? An invisible patient, doctor. Why, this is absurd. It's some trick. Who are you? Men call me the shadow. The shadow? You have heard of the shadow, Dr. Harrison. The shadow seeks only one thing. The truth. The truth about what? The truth about all things. The truth about Steve Grant. Grant? Oh, yes, yes. He came to you yesterday? Yes, uh, Lamont Cranston sent him. You treated him? No, I did not. Why not? The truth, Dr. Harrison. Yes, I'll tell the truth. I could not treat him. He was... Dr. Harrison! He's dead. Shot by somebody from outside that window. Lamont! Lamont! Where are you, Lamont? Right here, Margot. I heard shot while I was waiting in the car. I, Shh. I, Someone fired through the window while the shadow was questioning Dr. Harrison. The doctor's dead. <gasps> now, come on. We've got to locate that killer if we can. But it's pitch dark, Lamont. Now, careful, careful. He must have run off this way. Do, do you know who killed the doctor? Oh, I'm afraid we'll never find out now. <gasps> Lamont. Yes, Margot. Look. Look, running down the street. Way up there. Oh, Lamont. Yes, I see it, Margot. It, it's a flaming skeleton. <laughs> Oh, yes, the shadow will be back in just a moment. You know, one of the most mysterious things about this program is just what this announcement is doing in the middle of it. You don't have to be the shadow to figure out the answer. They just want somebody to say that if you write your letters B-mail, they'll get there faster, take less space on crowded transports, and make more folks at home happy because you can write shorter letters, but more of them. So for fast communication with home, V-mail. And now, back to the shadow. Oh, why 
did I ever meet you, Cranston? Why did I ever lay eyes on you? Oh, Commissioner, you're not blaming Lamont for the flaming skull. Flaming skeleton now, Marco. No, I'm just complaining that he gets me mixed up in the screwiest crime. Now, there's nothing screwy about this. Harrison was killed by a 38 caliber slug fired through that window. What could be more realistic than that? Nothing, except that you claim a glowing skeleton finger pulled the trigger. We saw the skeleton, Commissioner. Oh, I believe you, Miss Lane. Too many people have seen it for me to hang on to that hallucination theory. I only wish I could see it for once. Commissioner. Yes? Commissioner. Yes, what is it, Cardona? We've just picked up a flash from one of the patrol cars. Yes? They've spotted the flaming skull just breaking into the Zircon Jewel Store on State Avenue. He's in there now, and if we rush, we can get over there in time to trap him coming out. Now, let's go, Commissioner. Maybe this time you'll see the skeleton. Where is this Zircon jewel store? How much further, Cardona? Just around the next corner, Commissioner. I only hope we're there in time. Yes, I wouldn't want the Commissioner to lose the pleasure of meeting Mr. Skeleton. All right, all right. Stop here, Cardona. We'll walk the rest of the way. Yes, sir. I can see the police patrol car up ahead. Then Mr. Skeleton must still be inside the store. Ah, come on. And remember, let's keep quiet. This is our big chance. Uh, Commissioner! What a place is those maniacs. Hey, look, he's coming out. It's the flaming skeleton, Commissioner. All right, hey, come on, let's go. Get off of him, you men! Don't let him get away! Now, they're shooting wild, Commissioner. Well, I can't blame them. Sense of life, but that's a nasty thing to see in the dark. He's getting away! Faster! Oh, it's no use, Commissioner. We'll never get him. No one will ever get him. Uh, don't turn superstitious on me, Cardona. Well, Cardona's right, Commissioner. The skeleton's vanished. We, we couldn't hold him, sir. We did the best we could. He... He got dry. Now, this is a fine thing. What's the matter with you nursery babies? Afraid of a skeleton? It's not that, Commissioner. Isn't it obvious, Commissioner? This flaming skeleton is a startling, bewildering sight. The shock of seeing it checks everyone just long enough to give the skeleton a few seconds leeway for escape. That's it, Mr. Kent. Okay, okay. Let's get back to the Zircon store and see how much Mr. Skeleton got away with this time. Now, wait. What now? Apparently, our thief didn't get away with all he took. Look on the ground here. Well, Lamar, three little jewels. I got them. Holy smoke. They're diamonds. Diamonds? That color? Yes, Commissioner. They've turned blood red. Lamont. Lamont. Yes? Stop pacing up and down and listen to me. Got an idea? Mm Mm-hmm. Suppose we get some sleep. It's 8 o'clock in the morning, Lamont. How much longer are we going to sit here and think? Until I can figure out three things. We're not going to go through all that again, are we? Why was Steve Grant kidnapped? Why was Dr. Harrison murdered? Because they knew something about the flaming skeleton. Yeah, but what? You know the answer to that. You told me yourself. It's tied up with a photograph of the skeleton hand and the diamonds that turned red. But why did those diamonds turn red? How was that photograph made? I'm going home. Only Harrison had taken Grant on as a patient. Didn't he? No, no. He told the shadow he couldn't treat him. Oh, what difference does that make? Well, if he'd taken Steve as a patient, he might have left a record of some kind. This way, his information died with him. I'm going home. Oh, it's the door. I'll take it. Who in the world could that be so early? Oh, Mrs. Grant, come in. Mr. Cranston, I just got... Oh, this is Miss Lane. She's working with me on the case. Margot, Mrs. Grant. How do you do, Mrs. Grant? What's wrong, Mrs. Grant? Oh, Mr. Cranston, I'm frightened. Why? The flaming skull. What about it? Oh, I think I'm going to be the next victim. You? What makes you think so, Mrs. Grant? I've had warnings. You've seen the skull? No, but I've seen the warnings. Mr. Cranston, since the night that Steve was taken, my whole house has been glowing. How do you mean that? Oh, when I put the lights out, objects flame up and glow with a weird green color. Steve's watch and the money on his desk, spoons, silver, many things. Golly. Then last night I decided I'd sleep in Steve's room. I thought if the flaming skull came back, I'd I'd be waiting. Did you see it? Did it come back? I didn't see it, but I know it was in the room. How do you know? Look at my arms. Golly, they're covered with burns. Burns? Look, Lamont. It's as though a skeleton hand had clutched Mrs. Grant or were the hand of some mythological god like Thor. What? I said like... Yeah, you said Thor. Yes. Thor, what an idiot I've been. Steve practically told me the answer to this case when I first met him. Oh, what do you mean, Lamont? I mean I know all about the flaming skeleton. Come on, Mrs. Grant. We're going to police headquarters. <laughs> All 
right. Now, what do you want me to do about Mrs. Grant, Cranston? Well, here's the setup. You're to take Mrs. Grant into protective custody. It's to be kept a secret. Why? You'll find out soon enough. At 6 o'clock tonight, I want you to release this news item to the papers. I've written it out for you. Well, not so fast, Cranston. Now, you're making me dizzy. Now, listen, Commissioner. Do you want to get your hands on the flaming skeleton? What a question. Then do exactly what I've told you. Then what in blazes are you going to do? I'm going to trap the flaming skeleton. And now for a resume of the earlier broadcast. In an attempt to protect the wife of Steve Grant... The police have taken Mrs. Grant into protective custody. She's being held under close guard at the old mansion house outside the city. There in a lonely building, set in lonely fields, the widow of Stephen Turn it Grant off, Margot. No, it's fine. What time is it? Eight o'clock. Then Mr. Skeleton's known the news for two hours. He'll be here soon. Here at the mansion house? Mm, right. Under the misapprehension that Mrs. Grant is here, too. But he's only going to find just us folks, just the two of us. The three of us, Margot. You're forgetting the shadow. Oh, say, shouldn't, shouldn't you be the shadow now? Suppose our flaming skeleton walks in unexpectedly. Well, he can't. We'll have plenty of warning of his coming. I've run a circuit of electricity in a circle around the field surrounding this house. But how will that warn us? Well, there are four concentric rings circling this house, Margot. Each is made of a single wire carrying enough current to signal when Mr. Skeleton steps over it. We'll hear the signals on this electroscope connected with the circuits. But wouldn't any person crossing those circuits cause the signal to sound? Not any person, Margot. Just Mr. Skeleton. Why? Because of the peculiar constitution of his body, you see. Hold it. That's the uh, electroscope. Mr. Skeleton? Yes, he's inside the outermost circuit. He's inside the second circuit. He's inside the third. You know what to do? Yes, I, I'm supposed to put out the light and hide in the closet alongside the switch. Right. When Mr. Skeleton gets into this room, the electroscope signals will reach a peak and then cut off automatically. Then I'm supposed to switch on the lights again. Oh, he's inside the fourth circuit. Get moving, Margot. Lamont, I... Don't argue. This man is dynamite. Put out the lights. Right. I'll get in the closet. Stand by. What's that? Who's there? Don't move. <laughs> Good evening, Steve Grant. Who's that? The shadow. The shadow? I can't see you. No man sees the shadow. But all men see you, Mr. Skeleton. You know, Shadow? The Shadow knows everything. You were a foolish man, Grant. A fool. I was desperate. When Dr. Harrison told me I'd caught radium poisoning, that the salts were in my blood and bones, that death was waiting two months off, I... You sought for revenge on the world? No. No, I thought only of my wife. She had nothing. There was no money, no insurance, nothing. I had to raise something for her. I couldn't leave her penniless. You had no right to rob. There was no other way to raise money. You had no right to kill. There was no other way to keep my secret. I couldn't let her discover her husband was a thief. She would never have kept the money I was raising for her. She will have no part of anything you've stolen. For heaven's sake, you can't betray me. The shadow seeks justice. Justice. There will be justice for your wife. But there must be justice for those you have robbed and those you have killed. No. Listen, I'm going to die anyway. I'll pay for the deaths. Pay with my own. There must be justice, Grant. You must give yourself up. You'll never take me. I warn you, I've killed before. I'm not afraid to kill now. You're mad, Grant. You must pay in full. No! <laughs> Can you, a flaming skeleton, kill an invisible shadow? Wherever you are, I'll kill you! <laughs> kill the shadow with what? Stop, Grant. You can't escape the shadow. Try and stop me. Stop, Grant! Shadow! Stay here, Margot. Keep out of this. There he goes, across the field. You can see the glowing skeleton running. Keep back, Margo. Why? What's wrong? Grant is running toward the high-tension wires on the road. If he gets too close to that tremendous current... Stop, Grant! Stop running! You'll never stop me! No one will ever stop me! If you value your life, don't move another step! Stop! <laughs> yes, Margo. He's dead. Let's get back to town and notify Commissioner Weston, Margot. Oh, my, it was awful to be electrocuted that way. Perhaps it's just as well, Margot. Fate simply anticipated the state executioner. Lamont, I, I can't understand it. What happened to Grant? He was experimenting on radium salt called thorium. Oh, that's why the mention of the god Thor put you on the right track. Yes, right? Margot. Grant apparently became infected with enough radium salt to poison him. When he first saw the flaming skull grinning at him, 
It was his own face he saw in the bathroom mirror. <gasps> Dr. Harrison must have explained the truth to Grant. Grant turned desperate and tried to raise money to leave his wife. And he killed Dr. Harrison before the doctor could tell the police the truth about the flaming skeleton. Yes. But I should have realized the truth sooner. Naturally, radium emanations are the only thing that can make a man's bones shine in the dark. Radium explains how Edward's photographic plate was exposed. Radium accounts for the diamonds that turned color. Radium emanations change the color of precious stones. So when you had that news broadcast made about his wife being at Mansion House, you knew that it would trap him. Well, of course, his only thought was for his wife. That's the explanation of the sound she heard that night he vanished. She heard poor Steve crying hysterically. When she got up and opened the door, she didn't see a skeleton kidnapping Steve. She saw poor Steve leaving. Not poor Steve. Poor Mrs. Grant. Don't worry about her, Margot. The shadow may be just, but he's also merciful. The shadow is going to temper his justice with mercy? Yes, and the name of that mercy is Cranston's bankroll. Careful with that laugh, Shadow. Careful. You might scare somebody. But quickly now. Let's go to the green room for a preview of our next production in a mystery playhouse. Follow me. Come. Come, come. Well, Doctor, what did you find out? Uh, several interesting things. Here in town and at the cottage. I'm sure the girl's all right. Uh, quite pretty, too, eh? Well, cheer up. The mystery started before her time. Your pretty little miss and a railing father have been living at the cottage just ten days. The girl's name is Felice Marchot. She and her father are refugees. But long before that, a Mr. and Mrs. Turner lived there. Oh, yes? They kept to themselves a great deal. I see. Mrs. Turner, it seems, was not an American like her husband. She was dark, exotic-looking, rather Asiatic but certainly attractive. How long ago was this? Four months ago. Well, then what have they to do with it? Now, be patient. One day the Turners left and never came back. The cottage was then occupied by new tenants. But they soon vacated. Why? They claimed the cottage was haunted. Haunted? Yes. Does Felice say the cottage is haunted? No, but of course she's only been there a short time. But to get back to the Turners... It seems they left very early in the morning. Yes. Nobody actually saw them go. Mr. Turner's been seen since. But I can't find anybody who has seen Mrs. Turner. Oh. I've even called Mrs. Turner's friends in New York, and no one has seen her. You mean that Mrs. Turner was not... Can't be. No. Well, the influence of anyone at the point of death especially a violent death upon their surroundings, is very strong. You mean those cries I heard? Precisely. I'm afraid, my boy, that you, and only you, can solve the strange disappearance or murder of Mrs. Turner. <laughs> Do the voices of the dead come back? Perhaps you'll find an answer. In a mystery of the blue jar. Until next time, then, this is Peter Laurie closing the doors of the Mystery Playhouse. Good night. Sleep tight. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.